Anyway, we have someone who could have played for any country <laughs> in Africa but chose to play for Uganda. Some claim that he's Kenyan. Yes, he is, but he's Ugandan. <laughs> Denis Onyango, former captain of the Uganda Cranes, goalkeeper Adma Melody Sanders, joins us for the show. Good evening, Dennis. Good evening to you guys and good evening to the viewers. Um, we're glad to have you on the show. Uh, it's been quite a while. Uh, the last time you, you were supposed <coughs> to be on the show, you sent us the coach, uh, Rulani Mokwena. He really enjoyed his time here. Yeah, he loved it in Uganda and he's, he's willing to come back sometime mm. when he's not so busy. But yeah. uh, of course, it's always good to have these people move around the continent and mm. see where Dennis comes from, where uh, some of the best footballers in Uganda that he sees, where they come, come from. from yeah. And it's, it's always good to, to, to bring them around. Uh, the, the one thing that also strikes me now that you remind me, uh, probably last one about Rulani, is that he was shocked about how much we knew about sundowns and him and south african football yeah yes, I think all the things we say it was hey, do you really know <laughs> <laughs> yeah probably he thought people are not following uh, south african football that much yeah that's why he was shocked but uh, he got to realize that uh, they actually do they they really do follow sundowns not only sundown but south african football from mm. the days of <coughs> david obo and the team with the virus and mm. postnet so yeah he's he's gonna preach the same knowledge to the other people in South Africa that look, people know much about our league and our players yeah. more than anything else. And you know, when you walked in, I was telling you about uh, mm. how I watched you guys lose. Uh, I'd only confuse the trophies <laughs> because I saw you lose to Orlando Pirates in the MTN 8. Then you won the Curling Black Label Cup, uh, beating the same Pirates uh, yeah, it a was few weeks later. I think it was a late? small space of time yeah. when we played them in the MTN 8 which has more money than uh, the Culling <laughs> Black so, so you won the one with more money? <laughs> they won, they the, won one the one with more money. <laughs> more money. That's how hard we were. Yeah. But uh, that's life. We, we wanted to get our pride back. We don't believe in revenge. Yeah. Uh, it's all about pride and the uh, dignity. That's what we wanted to get back as, the, as a club. Yeah, I, I was also extremely happy. Uh, in September, I was in Cape Town and uh, uh, professor, I carry all this. I was there for the Rugby World Cup 7. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm carrying this flag. I'm um, walking from the stadium uh, to go and find a McDonald's to get something to eat because there wasn't nice food at the stadium. Then as I'm walking by, someone says hello to me and says, I'm from Uganda. And then I say, yeah. Proud to tell them I'm Uganda. So it's, hey, some countries, then it's on young. I'm like, hey, <laughs> this man is making me a star here. Yeah. They don't know when you come here, then you need me to be a star because I have the microphone. We all need each other. <laughs> we all need you, you, each you other. You did tell him how I send autographs when I was with you and Mitchell. At, uh, yeah. I was working with him and Mitchell. In yeah, yeah, in, 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 in uh, And they thought Santan? I was the one joining. Yeah, just in, in Santan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a no, small I, world. I, I didn't get a chance. Actually, the time <coughs> I was in South Africa, you were back home here. Yeah. yeah, so I missed uh, I missed a chance to come and uh, visit you. But Ori is glad. Ori is glad to have you, Dennis. Um, Dennis um, is in Uganda because while he's retired from the national team, he still feels he can lend a hand to where the Uganda cranes can go. So over the past week, Dennis Onyango um, is, was unveiled as an ambassador for a campaign that involves the Uganda Cranes, uh, which is called Cranes Cabo. Now, this is an initiative uh, by the sponsors of the national team, Nile Breweries, through their brand Nile Special, to try and get every fan involved in Uganda's campaign to get to the World Cup in 2026. When, you, when Africa will have nine slots, four more than the five we've had for a very long time. Dennis, you must be feeling like you want to come back because we mm. can't qualify for the World Cup and yeah. that will hurt. Well, it, it, for me, it, it never hurts. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Nile Breweries for uh, <coughs> endorsing me as the brand ambassador for mm. the Cranes Cabo. Uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm retired from the national team and people thought, no, well, he's coming back and he's going to disturb us again. That, that, that's why you blue ticked me. You didn't want to answer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't want to answer to anyone because we had a plan. We had a plan with, uh, with Nile Breweries to, to try and uh, put everything on the table 
But uh, for me, mm. it gives me joy that uh, they chose me over a lot of players that have done well for the national team over the years. And uh, they endorsed me as, a, as, as, as the, 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 the brand ambassador of Cranes Cabo. But we were starting early. We were starting early to plan for the 2026 20, World Cup. Yeah. Uh, which is good. I mean, you've just said that uh, we have more slots now. Yeah. Where yeah. Africa is having how many? Nine. Nine. Yeah. I mean, sure. why, why sure. not? Why not? <laughs> why uh, not? Yeah. Let us if throw ourselves prepare. in there. So yeah. if we pre if we prepare early, yeah. like any other tournament, we've qualified to the Afcon after a very long time. We, we prepared early, mm. and uh, we we were focused on on the campaign it will always give us the results. And uh, I think that's what Nile Brewer is trying to do. Mm. Uh, prepare early in this, in this World Cup, the 2022, preparing for 2026, which is fantastic. And uh, mm. for every bottle that you, 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 you buy of Nile Brewer is 50, 50 shillings is going off to, to, to try and facilitate the cranes. One would say, yeah, they are being given money from the government. But it's never, it's never enough. Yeah. I mean, uh, when you're preparing for a, a huge tournament like the World Cup, you need to have all the facilities ready. Mm. The flights, the hotels, the players must be focused. They must have good incentives because you're competing with the world, by the way. Mm. So when you compete with the world, you must be also on, on the same level with them. So we are trying to uh, mobilize all Ugandans. Uh, companies to come on board and and let's take the the, the, the country to the next level uh, i was saying it uh, at the launch that the young ones have caught up with us because they were playing the sekafas and all this but now they've gone also to two afcons we've been at two afcons of course uh not to disrespect the previous ones but we've been to two afcons uh, recently mm -hmm. and the boys are going to the afcon so let us be leaders and take the team to the World Cup and inspire them because football is all about inspiring and working together. That's why it's a team sport. So we, we believe that when we start early with Nile Breweries and, and coordinating with FUFA, mm. uh, the team might make it for the World Cup because it's possible. We just need to dream and believe in ourselves. And, and before Andrew comes in, um, people may, may think the World Cup is extremely distant. <coughs> I was with you guys in Alexandria uh, all those years ago. After Manuel Oku scored the goal and we beat Egypt here at mm. Nambole, mm. had we avoided defeat on that day? Because that was match day four. Mm. Dennis, you remember, we could have stayed top of a group with two games to play mm. and could have been in Russia. So the margins sometimes, while it sounds extremely distant, mm. the margins are that small, Andrew. Yeah, they are, especially given that uh, at the time there, there were no playoffs actually. Yeah. We we're just topping the group. You top the group and you're, in, you're in Russia. Yeah. <laughs> uh, of course, there were other stages, mm -hmm. yeah. but mm -hmm. when it comes to a playoff, normally, you yeah. know, you're faced with Senegal, maybe just one meal, draw one here, and uh, there's always that margin. But we were close, especially yeah. that uh, when Mitchell left, I think uh, Moses Bassana, Moses, yes, uh, yes, we, yes, when Moses, uh, yes. Salah scored that pressure penalty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in Alexandria. But, but now looking at it at four, I mean, there, 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 there are qualifications whereby Uganda have just, you know, missed by a point yeah. or by, you know, but this time around at four, of course, you can look at, for example, this World Cup, you know, Egypt is not there. You're like, okay, Nigeria is not there. Yeah, like, okay. okay. But we can squeeze ourselves in there, yeah. you know, to make the nine. So at the end of the day, you cannot blame anyone who's dreaming now, yeah. especially with the numbers that have increased. And everyone has a right to dream, especially if you've been at least to the most recent, uh, you know, a nation, a, a nation a Nations Cup, Cup so tournaments. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and I like that this has started now. Very early. Very yeah. early. Yeah. Uh, you hope on the technical bit as well. Mm. They're mapping out on the players and, uh, you know, the, the team that goes there because mm. you need the organization off the pitch as well as on the on pitch. The pitch uh, we now, by now, we should have a group. It doesn't have to be public, uh, public out there. But the technical team, and like you're saying, and FUFA, mm -hmm. should have a group that this is going to be the core, uh, the spine upon which a team is built. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, Dennis, uh, as a former player yourself for for Uganda, and soon we'll be calling you former player for <laughs> soon, <laughs> soon. <laughs> soon. Very soon. <laughs> not Very too long. Soon. Mm -hmm. um, you must you must understand, and you've lived through errors. Uh, where teams weren't very organized. Uh, I remember watching Yard Villa back in 2004. And then 2005, I, I was one of the few crazy people who walked out of Makere to come 
to watch games at Nachivuvo. It wasn't something university students did often. Mm. Uh, going back to that game against Al Ahli, the goalless draw <laughs> before we got battered in uh, mm. Cairo. In, by uh, the military stadium. <laughs> <laughs> All those 17 years ago. Uh, and that's, that's how close <laughs> probably I've been to the game. But not the power of organization. Yeah. How much of a margin, and this is the first, the final one, because I know you've had a very long day and you're very tired. Um, the power of organization, how much of a difference can organization starting early to focus on something like 2026, how much of a difference can it make? It may be a point or a goal to a mm. fan. Yeah, to know that table, now go about since the goal in. Yeah, I, I think uh, when it comes to organization in, in football, it's very, very important. That's why you find football is also much organized. Sometimes it's disorganized, but you must also have discipline <coughs> when you're playing football. Mm. So w when, when a campaign like this is being launched for over four or five years, it shows that uh, we're looking forward to the best players, the best uh, <coughs> or, uh, preparation, getting good uh, uh, teams that you're going to play against. And uh, for me, I, I'll, I'll give you an example. When we were at Sundown and we were looking at conquering uh, Africa, Africa yeah. we, we looked at preparing very well. We were playing friendlies in DRC, we played friendlies in, 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 in Ghana against the likes of Hearts of Oak. We went to play uh, the, big, the big clubs on the, on, the, on the continent. And that was in preparation of winning the CAF Champions League and we managed to do that. So if we prepare very well as a country now and stay focused on our goal and that's to qualify for, for the World Cup, we will make <coughs> it because uh, even when we were playing these previous qualifiers, we were missing by a goal, a mm, point. Points. And we were not really focused on that. We were only focused at the AFCON. Mm. And we were happy with the AFCON. But now, I think we need to go one step ahead and, and try and, and uh, look at the World Cup. Because it's possible we've seen uh, the likes of Togo going to the World Cup. I mean, why mm. not? We, 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 we have the quality. And the boys who are going to be in that stage of playing at the <coughs> national team will be will have a little bit of experience. I mean, these boys who are playing the under-20, under-23s, they are going to the AFCONs for the under-20, 23. So they will have that edge over the other players. So I believe that uh, the initiative is good. And uh, we just need to be very much organized, stay focused, and keep the boys together, keep the team together for, for this tournament, and mm -hmm. make sure that they know each other as much as they can to, to give us joy. Because I, I also want to be to the World Cup. Yeah. I want to be at the World Cup maybe as a support, uh, as... As uh, FUFA yeah, president? No, nah, I didn't say that. <laughs> as, as a technical advisor, or as Mitchell calls me, technical advisor, or as a brand ambassador for Nile Breweries, which they've done very well for and me. And also you keep yourself fit just in case. Well, I'm not going <laughs> to go into that because I believe it's, it's, it's time for the young ones to take over and do the business. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, before you dismiss, Onyango, yeah. I know, I know I want JP. To go to the, this World Cup, yeah. Uh, I know JP, JP of Nell Brewery, I saw yeah. him with you. Yeah, yeah. He's watching this show. He surely mm. wants us to continue talking about Kabo, MTN Kabo. For the next yes, five years. So he better, he I'm inviting him to be part of uh, the sport nights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, he's he watching. He so he, know, he knows what, JP, you know what to do. <laughs> and, and he's a <laughs> former <laughs> rugby player, and so probably yeah. we should invite him here to do absolutely, some analysis. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah no, they, they, they need to come and support, and uh, of course, drink responsibly. Because yeah. we want you at that World Cup alive. So if you buy, if you buy for your friends as well, let's enjoy this thing together. Yeah. So that we keep ourselves going and uh, have fun. Wrap them for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, uh, wonderful. Uh, Dennis, uh, probably the final one or on the show. You saw Senegal today and then Africa. I, I, wa I don't want to be specific about mm. African mm. hopes because that is uh, more of a routine question, I think, across radio and television. Um, but the World Cup in general, who, who do you think has an edge? Who have you seen in the build-up and you're thinking, this is the moment? It's still early. It's still early to, to know. To tournament football can be weird. <laughs> yeah, so for me, I, I think what, what really gives pro problems to African countries is 90% focus uh -huh. in the game to keep that consistency throughout the game. And you see how Senegal conceded. One, one mistake and you're punished, and that's football. Uh -huh. Lately in football, you make one mistake and you're punished, and it, the game will end one nil. Besides the England scoring like it's a party, because they're playing Iran, but 
in terms of tactics and all those things, I think African, African teams should focus more and stay in the game long, as long as they can. And if they can get an, an early goal, it will help. But uh, I still believe Senegal has a chance to go yeah. to the next stage. But they need to dig deep now because they could have held on to that one point and made it very difficult for, for, for Netherlands. But uh, we believe. Who's winning? I, I still believe Brazil has, <laughs> has, a, has a better team. You're just uh, like me. He has some. Uh, I, I, I don't know which team is winning. We need to end the show. Oh, I don't very think. Very Argentina. 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 Ah, they only <laughs> Mark you, Messi you and Messi. it's game over. You met Messi. Why not pick him? To Mark me? Messi and the game is finished. By the way, Ismail, have, have you tried to like say, say if <laughs> we didn't have Messi, like uh, what happened? Uh, Argentina did not have hopes of winning the World Cup after Diego Maradona. It's yeah. not until Messi showed up yeah. that we believed again that we can win the World Cup. I think that's a game changer that is brought to the occasion because I, I felt maybe because I've been a fan. Since I was young, Ortega, 98, mm. big hopes. Then thereafter, 2002, not a good team. 2006, Riquelme, we didn't do well. We had Messi on the bench. I think that's why we lost to Germany in that penalty shootout. 2010, we had no coach. There was Diego Maradona. Maradona. Maradona was the coach, so we had no coach. Um, 2014, Alejandro Sabella, the coach, did very well. Go to the final. Then we had Gonzalo Higuain in that position. Missed our chance when Tony Cross passed him the ball. Uh, 2018, the team wasn't good. B totally beaten. 2022? I think <laughs> Argentina is at level. We have a very well balanced team. And now we've learned how to win again after winning that Copa America last year, beating Brazil at the Maracana. And that was very important. Extremely balanced. A very good goalkeeper finally. Argentina has not had that. Balanced defensively. A lot of workhorses behind Lionel Messi. And then someone who will score that single goal when we need it Lautaro Martinez. In 2014, we had Higuain. We had the chance to win the World Cup. He refused to score. He smiled. Yeah, like well, him. good luck. <laughs> <laughs> my man is on Brazil. Of course, there are other teams that, like the Germans, <laughs> they, they, they have a very good team yeah. also, the Germans. But I look at Brazil because they have, they have everyone. They yeah. have the firepower up front is, is incredible. And defensively well balanced. And Deep. two very good goalkeepers. Yeah. What do you need? The goals. Yeah. You, you need the goals. Of course, France has its own issues now. That With the injuries. Yeah, yeah, but that's football. Not everyone will play at we'll the World Cup. There, but yeah. it's, it's probably it's a chance for Mbappe to show what he can, he can do. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that is Dennis Onyango. When he speaks football, you got to listen. you got to listen. He has a lot to say about the game because... Uh, probably he's kept goal long enough to be able to see what is inside the ball. Many of us haven't. Thank you, Dennis, for coming to the show tonight. And uh, good luck to the Uganda Cranes. Everyone join the campaign and be part of it. Don't just sit there and wait for Uganda to qualify. You can make a contribution, and you should make a contribution.